arm bit off, you've been pulled off a gurney, and now you're being used as a battering ram. At any point, does that become funny to you? <laughs> well, when you put it like that, <laughs> being used as a battering ram. <laughs> like in your head, you're going, "All right, like this, good, good for you, shark. I'm not mad." Is that what you're thinking, or you're just in shock and fear? I think. Well, this doesn't equate, but I was I went for a run yesterday, and it it uh, <laughs> absolutely it's the same thing, uh, and it started to rain, and then it started to hail. And it was like really early. It was really cold. So it was just freezing cold hail. It was, uh, it was coming for minutes and minutes and minutes. It was just t- awful. And eventually I just started, I couldn't start laughing at it. So I just got so terrible. I was just laughing at how terrible it was. So maybe if, if Jim has the same kind of insanity that I do, then perhaps he, it was, <laughs> it was such an awful situation. All he could do was smirk beneath his, uh, the, the breathing apparatus. Imagine the story they're going to tell. Like, so the Carter charge. Blake is at a bar. And he's he's like, hey, what happened down there? Well, this guy, Jim, got his arm bit off, and then the shark pulled him from a gurney and used him as a battering ram. No one's going to believe I'm going to need more information, more details. This isn't enough. <laughs> so what, you, what happened to Back the second up. shark? Like, what happened? Like, How did you get the got... shark on the on, on the platform first? So you can <laughs> go back to that. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> the, the, the cook was in an oven? Like, that's a... Uh, man... Well, yeah, he had a never... bird in the kitchen under water. Yeah, this, no this, one would ever gloss over all the stories. shark stuff and focus on the really small detail. <laughs> yeah, let me get back to the shark here. But no, what's the no, bird? The bird. Where does the bird go? <laughs> Who taught it this way? What do the sharks watch on TV? Oh man, Armageddon. <laughs> That's the word right there. <laughs> Armageddon, Komodo. Oh yeah. Seventh Seal. They turn on what? Seventh Seal because they think it's about seals, and then they end up learning chess. <laughs> wait that's that's brilliant like they just get together outside <laughs> they have their munchies they're they kind of like tore up that tiger shark in the little vittles that they can munch on throughout like popcorn maybe that's where they learned how to like plan an offensive attack is by watching the chess game in seventh seal wow <laughs> we've cracked it boys we've there cracked we it <laughs> and this is all be- this is great so you helped us get there and i really appreciate it <laughs> The rest of my day is going to be amazing. Oh, wait, real quick. Have you seen Rogue, the Australian crocodile film? I have not. I've never even heard of that. It's Greg McLean, the guy who did Wolf Creek. And it has Rada okay. Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, it has okay. Michael Vartan. But, yeah, if you get bored and you're – check out Rogue. <laughs> Rogue, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen Wolf Creek, and I like that oh, one. That one's gnarly. The second one's crazy, The too. show. And the show is good as well. There's a show? Yeah. Oh. And he, is it just him running around killing people? Um, There's, like, a main character. I've only seen, like, the first, like, season. But, you know, it's the same guy. And oh. it's a pretty good show. And the second one, he was just running over kangaroos in a semi. <laughs> and I was just going, this has gone too far. Like Joyride, but Australian? Yeah. Ooh, Joyride's good. Joyride is a classic. All right. And how terrifying. would Paul Walker? How would Paul Walker have done as Carter Blake? Hmm. I think he'd done all right. Yeah, that's a good one. Because his freak out I mean, face is so good when you yeah. watch him freaking out in movies. Like, oh my god! Like, oh man, he freaks me out with his freak outs. I think he'd be a bit less of a, a, a kind of a burly presence. Where, where, when Thomas Jane <laughs> has his his like uh, his struts. Yeah. Tom Jane is a little bit more intimidating. Yes. Like Paul Walker is like pretty boy. Tom Jane beautiful as well, but like also like if he was you know in my face, I'd be a little scared. <laughs> Tom Jane's trying to fight you. It's kind of like trying to. <laughs> yeah, t- Tom Jane sells sells the bad boy image a bit more than Paul Walker does. Uh, but it, would, it would change the character, but it would be a, still be a great character, I think. So be a, a great mm-hmm. presence. And uh, instead of LL Cool J, put Tyrese because I love Too Fast, Too Furious. So just any no. excuse, mm-hmm. no, Paul I, Walker I, and Tyrese together. I think that makes the film worse. Uh... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, LL's really good in this movie. Yeah, preacher. Exactly. Uh, he's so he is. Good. I don't want he a breaks. Tyrese rap at the end of this film. No, thank you. <laughs> I know what... that Michael Rapp. Port is supposed to be like the goofy, like comic relief, but LL Cool J is like funnier in the movie than he is. Absolutely, yes. yeah. That just made Jay's day. Jay's yeah. gonna be very happy. Yeah. Uh, if you if you were to <laughs> suggest subbing in 
uh, ludicrous for Michael Rappaport. How does that flow anyone's boat? Whoa. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, that Too Fast, Too Furious cast in yeah. this film. <laughs> greatest movie ever made. Second greatest movie ever made next to Deep Blue Sea. James Remar could put him in here. Okay. I'm, very, I'm very much on board with putting Eva Mendes in the Saffron Burrows role. Yeah. Uh, and we'll leave that where it is. Uh, mm-hmm. Devin Aoki. <laughs> Cole Hauser. Oh, what? What's Cole Hauser going to be doing in this? Oh, movie? wait, he'd be Carter Blake. <laughs> I think he could be Preacher. I think he'd be a good Preacher. Cole Hauser? Talking yeah. to a bird? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's it daring. would be very... He would chew the scenery so hard. <laughs> Imagine... Actually, I'm old, so I don't know if you all remember this. When people back in the 90s, when they ate their stuff crust backwards, and everyone's like, you're crazy. Like, you're crazy. Hang on, hang on. What? What? What do you... What? So, at what? Pizza Hut, they yeah. had stuffed crust oh, pizza. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How and do you eat it backwards? Had... I don't, I'm, they... I don't understand. So don't the stuffed crust pizza, right? So they would put cheese in the crust, and so yeah. instead of people eating the crust last, they would eat the crust first because oh, the crust see. is so delicious. Okay. But when people did that, so there was a commercial with Dennis Rodman, the basketball player, and David Robinson. David Robinson's like an Air Force, just like real like cool proper dude, and Robin's all tattooed riding motorcycles. But then Rodman called Robinson crazy for eating his pizza backwards. So when you said Cole Hauser as Preacher, that's immediately what went to my head, a commercial from the 90s. It's like, you're crazy, man. I don't see it, but I want to now. (laughs) Uh, James Remar in the Sam Jackson role, or the Jim Whitlock role. I would like to see his arm bitten off. I can't see his face. (laughs) James Remar? Yeah. What? what? I I don't know. That's amazing. Not a Dexter fan? Um, I've seen all of Dexter, but I remember him as Samantha's like boyfriend from Sex and the City, and he was like an a hole. So I just hate his face. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable. So you'd like you'd like to see him get whitlocked? Yep, whitlocked or um, Sam Jackson, <laughs> like just. <laughs> Actually, you want him to be one of the people from the beginning and just have one of those kids be killed off, and that would be Remar. <laughs> you wouldn't have to look at his face so much. This all college kids and Remar on the boat. And then he uh, gets eaten by the shark and the college kids live. No, I'd like him to be whitlocked so he could be used as a battering <laughs> ram as well. You want to see him get smushed into the glass, <laughs> yeah. Into the glass, yeah. But no one's sad about it. I still wish there was a scene where the shark messed up a little bit and got the angle wrong and Stellan just smushed <laughs> up in the glass. <laughs> this... this... <laughs> And then he slides down. I cannot oh, believe it. who like who thought of that scene. That's just such a nightmare. It's the like shots. right out of like it's like Jaws three, but like not like cartoonish. It's like genuinely terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there is. Yeah, the shark rams the big glass in Jaws three. Yeah, but it's like a loaf of bread like floating <laughs> in the ocean. It's not like a shark. <laughs> it's, but they made this like genuinely scary. Like he really knows how like to make it like so tense and scary like even just i can't believe how how much it holds up i think that might be the name of our episode a loaf of bread in the ocean (laughs) my brain immediately split to that it just floats towards this glass like like nothing (laughs) it's like one of those great british bake-off loaves that they make just floating not like wonder bread just in the water it's definitely got a soggy bottom i (laughs) know That's something I never thought I'd ever envision, and I just did. You're bringing it today, Paige, and I I, I thank you for this. Thanks. I don't have a podcast to plug or anything. I'm literally just on Twitter to, like, talk about Taylor Swift and sharks. (laughs) Hey, you like her new album? Which one? Both of them? Yes. Well, uh, Folklore is great. That's the one I list. That's the the one with uh, Boney Vey, right? The, The song I like a lot. Cardigan and stuff. That's Folklore. Yeah, but he's all that he um Justin Vernon is also on Evermore, which was just released last week. She's yeah. popping out albums like crazy. I can't keep up. She's she's crushing and the quarantine. I, I've taken so much psychological damage like emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> she is well, an emotional wait. therapist. <laughs> because of t- oh, because of her albums? But yeah, because of her songwriting. Yeah, she's so good. And like teaming up with the national and so, you know, what made me happy is my wife started l- listening a lot more of the national because of her. But I've been prop, yes. pro- I've been like, propping them for ten years. <laughs> now she's like, they're oh, like the national. It's, yeah, it's they're literally like my favorite band as well. So when they collided like that, it's like 
I have no but, words. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to make you a wreck on this one, but that's a really good album. And my wife bought Evermore. I just, I've been so busy with other, no, yeah, Evermore. She's, I've just been too busy to listen to it. Like we normally go take a drive and cruise around and jam out loudly to it, but I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So I'm not getting, I don't, I'm not all emotional yet towards it, but, uh, yeah. Sorry, we might have lost you there talking sorry, about these. Sorry, Jay. Yeah. That's all right. I, I <laughs> haven't listened to a Taylor Swift album, so I cannot contribute. Uh, I just, I'm not, I don't follow modern music. You children, uh, Mark is older <laughs> than I am. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love a good pop song. I love the art behind it. Like I was the, reading about Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas," and she patterned it like an AABA, I think, beat, and then so after like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman, so that people had familiarity with it, they kind of got the beat with the song. So I love the art behind certain pop songs and like the visuals that you can create with that stories you tell. Like I think there's an art to a good pop song. I, I don't mean to this at all. The the Taylor Swift songs, the, the more popular ones that I've heard on the radio, I do like. I just don't listen to a lot of music as well. Uh, so it's, if if I were to, then I would definitely seek it out. It's just it's not a, a world that I live in. Anyway, I'm just worried about cardigan popularity because I love my cardigans, and so I hope people aren't <laughs> wearing cardigans all over the place. Buying up all the cardigans, yeah. It's like the guy who wore a bowler hat before Breaking Bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was, he was like ahead his... of the game. Yeah, he and then everyone's the like, hey Breaking, now... Bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Breaking Bad. You know, it's like people who wore wetsuits with their sleeves cut off before this film. Uh... <laughs> uh, we'll get you out of here, Paige. I'm sorry. Uh... Any, anything else you want to talk about about this chapter or the film as a whole, Paige, before we let you go? Um, oh, I've pretty much covered it like how it psychologically damaged me as a child <laughs> and how i love it still 20 years later oh we're we're glad that you've survived the the trauma and still love it <laughs> and uh where you said you're on twitter where can people find you where can people follow you oh yeah you really set me up for that one okay you can find me at at gay taylor swift <laughs> there we go <laughs> on twitter <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh very nice excellent uh mark what do you what have you got to plug Oh, let's see. Uh, listen to Rotten Tomatoes podcast. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Listen to the verses, uh, show we do. We're on Peacock now, so you can check that out. I have an article coming out about movies released on December 25th for them. Uh, let's see. And then also film theory. Uh, I have this really weird thing up about Aquaman and sending endangered animals into combat. And I got more uh, videos coming up with them. And then go to movies, films, and flicks. Listen to the podcast, movies, films, and FLIX. Let's see. Uh, also, I wrote, I actually wrote an article about all the opening and closing of doors in the film. So just go look that up there. Yeah, that's it. Very nice. And you can find more of my writing over at lifevsfilm.com, life versus film. Or join us over on The Lamb, the large association of movie blogs, largeassmovieblogs.com, if you have a movie blog or podcast and want to be part of a bigger community of them. And you can find this podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at DeepBlueCPod, or email us DeepBlueCPod at gmail.com. Next week, we have a scene with dialogue in it. It's been so long. Uh, it's been it's been almost... <laughs> last week, there was a little bit of, of, of words spoken. This week, we had a small screen. But it's been three weeks since we've had a conversation, I think. So come back next week for dialogue. Uh, Does it have a loaf of bread and water, though? I, I don't think so. There is definitely water in it. It's a, it's a fun scene. There's a prayer. There's two F-bombs. Uh, it's Whoa. a lot going on next week on the show. But as for this week, uh, thank you to Paige for joining us. Thank you for having me. I had tons of fun. Glad to hear it. I've been Jake Lewitt. I'm Mark Hoffmeyer. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>